What's going on there guys? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening The sum out there. It's Aerith Master here on this Saturday, July 30th, 2022 date. It's about 11.51 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 1.0 earthquake here around the Alaska region. Not a big quake, just a little small microquake up there. Uh, before we jump into the earthquake activity, kind of want to cover the uh, Chinese rocket that was uh, scheduled to re-entry, uh, re-enter into Earth's atmosphere that has now taken place over the Indian Ocean and it looks like according to the US Space Command that uh, the People's Republic of China confirmed that Long March 5B re-entered over the Indian Ocean about 1045 MDT time uh, earlier this morning so uh, that's kinda cool I mean uh, luckily it didn't hit any populated regions uh, there was, of course, the uncertainty window of when it would enter uh, and what location and whatnot. Uh, from yesterday, we had a location right around the west coast or just off the west coast, which was a little scary. But it looks like re-entry uh, from this rocket happened a lot sooner than expected, which is good news. So uh, the latest there from the Space Track site uh, showed a couple of the uh, longitude and latitude coordinations and uh, the estimate of the re-entry window was only at about plus or 10 plus or negative 10 minutes at the time so that kind of put it out here in this region northwest of Australia uh, well off the coast of the Java Trench here uh, within this area where the uh, pin is dropped so uh, I'd rather have it out there than somewhere over land but man these little incidents here where um, things are falling from space is not good right all it's going to take is um, one of these things landing in a highly populated region and making a uh, quite the mess if that happens. All right, so all is safe and sound for now. Let's go ahead and jump into the earthquake activity. And uh, we got some big fires popping up here in Northern California, folks, from lightning last night. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. I want to cover the earthquake activity first. Uh, seeing quite a bit of movement uh, once again along the Kuro Kamachaka Trench southward. Uh, just south of Tokyo and just south of the Japan Trench here. A lot of activity kicking up yesterday and today as well. Quite a few fours. I still think we need to watch this area for some potential large-scale movement. Getting a little cluster of quakes as well around the Indonesia area. Uh, not a whole lot of building up or uh, any type of earthquake activity out here around the Fiji Islands area. Just a, just a uh, earthquake from yesterday actually. Late afternoon yesterday time frame of 5.1 in the Kermadec Trench. Not a whole lot going on through the South America region. A couple spotty older earthquakes out there. Uh, and the Puerto Rico region looks about the same. West Coast, let's go ahead and zoom in here uh, to the West Coast because I do want to cover the fires here. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the earthquake activity. Um, some movement around the coastal fault system here. This is the Makama Fault uh, outside of the Clear Lake region. Kind of runs up parallel with the San Andreas Fault. It is second here inland and um, it's showing a little bit of microquake activity kind of stretching its way up towards the Mendocino Point, Mendocino Fault Zone area and uh, just some microquakes for now but definitely have to watch that see if things uh, get more uh, active in that region. Some spotty activity throughout the rest of California uh, including a little bit of movement here south into the uh, just off the Brawley seismic zone a little 1.9 out there on the eastern uh, edge of the Salton Sea region. San Andreas Fault, the southern segment here, looks pretty quiet for now. Rest of the country, as we zoom out, a little query blast throughout the Washington region. A couple small earthquakes around Mount St. Helens. And uh, out here in Yellowstone 3.0, this one kicking up, it looks like overnight. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the, you know, let's go to the Yellowstone map here real quick and see what we got going on Ooh, look at that maybe a start of a swarm kicking up here at Yellowstone National Park sometimes these earthquakes can uh, trigger a swarm uh, so there's a 3.0 you guys see that right excuse me my voice is cracking again that's a 3.0 it's pretty obvious to see uh, at 0744 UTC time showed up all over the map there uh, 0744 UTC time is going to be this one so following that earthquake, looks like there's a little bit of swarming going on throughout the area of, uh, looks kind of like it's closer to the Maple, 
Maple Creek area as far as the epicenter goes. Uh, but it is definitely kicking up a little bit of swarming in the Yellowstone area, so we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but for now, just that three pointer and uh, a good handful of other after or uh, I can't see aftershocks because I believe these are swarms. It looks like there was maybe another two, maybe a little bit bigger than the two right here, uh, and some other smaller quakes there overnight and throughout the morning time frame here at Yellowstone National Park. So things uh, could get. Uh, could get interesting here over the weekend and next week we'll have to keep an eye on that sometimes these swarms uh, come out of the blue and then sometimes they just uh, uh, do this and, and then completely disappear so we'll watch that pretty closely up here at Mammoth Vault seeing some of that activity as well uh, back to the earthquake map not a whole lot going on throughout the eastern part of the country one little earthquake out around the Elgin area of South Carolina a 1.8 and Oklahoma a little small quake uh, near Chick uh, Chickasha, Oklahoma, a beautiful state of Oklahoma out there. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the EMSC model real quick because I know we got some activity uh, that's not showing up on the USGS map up around the Iceland area. Kind of have to scoot up here to this map and uh, zoom in a little bit and show you guys what we got. Look way up here, quite a bit of earthquake activity, including a couple, at least one four. USGS not showing that earthquake. Um, looks like a pretty good swarm of activity in the Iceland region there. Seen quite a few twos, threes, and as I noted, a 4.4. Uh, so gonna watch that pretty closely. Things could be getting active there with the volcanoes in that region. I'll watch that pretty closely, folks. Okay, California map, look at this. So yesterday we had some monsoonal moisture building up, even west of me here. I think there's a fire out here as well. I was looking at radar. I seen uh, there was lightning strikes here yesterday, and uh, I see a little bit of smoke on radar showing up. So it's not listed yet. I'm hoping that uh, that it's not a fire. That it might just be some residual smoke from other fires. But uh, uh, we'll watch this here, see if this develops. But either way, there's a couple fires up here in extreme northern California north of the uh, Klamath National Forest area outside of Wairika. okay the fire kind of uh, it's west of here there's evacuation zones uh, I believe they're under orders actually uh, in this area from a pretty big fire that's zero percent contained uh, this is called the McKinley fire uh, it struck was struck by uh, fired up by lightning yesterday uh, again, we had some monsoonal moisture coming up, and um, we are expecting it to ramp up as uh, far as the lightning storms go here in Northern California today, and uh, more specifically tomorrow, we're supposed to have quite a bit of monsoonal moisture coming up. Of course, there's rain, but everything's so dry out here, and these lightning strikes can spark pretty, uh, they can spark a fire really rapidly and uh, these little sprinkles and light showers was not enough to put the fires out uh, so we got a big potential for extreme fires kicking off here over the next couple days we've been pretty lucky here in northern california but uh, this is getting not good Eighteen thousand acres zero percent containment here is the map of the evacuation areas let's pull this up here real quick in the red is the evacuation orders these are all the fire ha uh, fire zones. Uh, looks like there's some warnings around Interstate 5 here in the uh, kind of a, a dull yellow color and also over here to the west. But these entire areas here, looks like Highway 96. Not for sure what communities are up here. I don't believe I've ever traveled through this area. Maybe, uh, but it's been a while. Normally I'll take a 299 outside of Redding if I'm heading towards Eureka. But uh, yeah, things are definitely cooking here. Here's the, check out this latest fire map here, or this later, latest uh, cam image, I should say. Uh, this one was actually at 10.07 a.m., so a couple hours old. We'll check out the live coverage here in a minute. Uh, but look at that huge pyrocumulus cloud building up here from the uh, McKinley fire. That's some pretty scary stuff. Not good whatsoever the uh, let me go to the alert wildfire map here stand by for just a second um doo -doo -doo -doo. i had it somewhere it looks like i may have uh 
Let's stand by for a second here. We'll be able to see the uh, live pictures here of the cameras. These are out of Reading, so we want to find a little camera that's kind of pointing up in this direction here. There's a couple of them. That one's behind the pole, it looks like. That kind of looks like it may be picking up a little bit of the smoke. Yeah, there's some of the smaller pyrocumulus clouds. But this thing is going to really ramp up throughout the day today with the heat coming in. Uh, and also the moisture. Uh, moisture can be good. But we don't want these thunderstorms out here in California because they will spark out some huge fires. And uh, that's definitely not good news. Let's see, here's another image. Those are These are um, just some clouds, cumulus clouds building up out there. But... Uh, yeah, it's a little on the scary side for the the folks that live up there, I'm sure. Hopefully everyone's out. There's a lot of small off-the-grid type areas out there. Um, let's see here. Also, uh, nearby, um, I believe this was sparked by lightning as well, is the China 2 fire. It's 300 acres. Uh, looks like 0% containment. It is out there in some heavily... Uh, wooded areas not a whole lot of access to uh, you know far as ground um, ground support goes as uh, far as getting the fire underway <clears throat> there's some evacuation orders listed for up here as well um, there's a shot from uh, let's see when was that looks like last night late last night off highway 96 uh, you can see the orange glow there of the fire so this isn't good whatsoever, folks, because the uh, uh, the moisture coming up. Let me show you guys. I really want to show you guys because I love using this map here off of windy.com. And um, they got a little option here, many different options. I mean, this is pretty much an all-in-one type of weather app. Uh, if you know what you're looking for, I like to check out the thunderstorm, the cape values uh, for today. Of course, this is monsoonal moisture coming up from Mexico. Very typical for this time of year. And of course, a lot of rain coming through Arizona, New Mexico, parts of Southern California as well, uh, where they need it. But once that moisture pushes up north here, there's still a lot of conductive activity, convection to create these, um, these storms, but not a whole lot of rainfall. So we get these lightnings, uh, lightning strikes. Here's about 3 p.m. today. Notice up here in Northern California, we got some... Uh, uh, some buildup and uh, Cape values getting up there as far as creating thunderstorms up here in the mountains. The valley, of course, sits here. Not really worried too much about fires in the valley because we're not forested. It's just uh, uh, agricultural range and um, stuff like that. But these up here, dry, dry areas around Weaverville. Uh, I know they had a fire up there a few, few years back, but there's been quite a bit of growth, uh, which is dry again, so it could burn. Uh, and up here around Mount Lassen as well. I definitely don't need that. So that's a little later today at 4 p.m. 9 p.m. kind of goes out. Check out tomorrow. Let me bring up uh, tomorrow afternoon time frame. Look at this. Much broader view. Much wider area of coverage in the uh, thunderstorm potential. And up here outside of Weaverville, a huge area of high cape values uh, indicating the thunderstorm potential in that region. And that's tomorrow. Uh, even into portions of Monday, uh, look look at throughout Nevada and stuff. That's huge area of monsoonal moisture coverage. Uh, so it looks like Monday we start to see that moisture and monsoonal push up north in Oregon, where it's well, it's not as dry as California. They've had quite a quite a winter up there, but um, still we don't want any fires sparking. But either way, in Northern California, still looking uh, potentially for some fires. Uh, throughout the region due to all these uh, lightning strikes that will be coming from these storms Southern California as well of course down here a whole lot of desert but uh, around Yosemite and areas northward um, you know there's still still quite a bit of uh, wooded areas so as much as I love the moisture this is not what we need uh, for fires that is not good um, let's see if I can bring up the Let's see, hold on a second here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Got a couple different ones. I don't I'm not for sure if this uh 
this page has a fire option on it or not I think it does but uh, I this here is probably not accurate because we don't have anything here on fire in the valley looks like it may be picking up that one up there but uh, we'll cover that a little bit more tonight uh, in the update I'll bring up the uh, a little bit better fire model as uh, far as the map goes and uh, we'll take a look at that dominant uh, high pressure system out here rotating clockwise uh, looks like upper level winds at least off the coast or from the north but we got that push of moisture coming up from the south uh, that will be pushing out luckily for me here push out any smoke uh, from these fires well north into Oregon uh, but again like I say all it takes is a couple good fires along these coastal ranges and the uh, Sierra Nevada to really uh, cover up the valley with smoke which I am not a big fan of I think I'm still recovering from the past couple years of breathing in hazardous smoke throughout the uh, the large fires including the Paradise fire uh, a few years back that was horrible I think I, I don't think I've even recovered from that uh, breathing that stuff in I try to stay inside during times like that but uh, you can't stay inside 24-7 all right, guys, uh, we'll update a little bit more on uh, any earthquake activity. We'll check out some island, uh, Iceland volcano activity a little bit later on and also cover this fire um, potential and thunderstorm setup here in California a little bit later tonight uh, in the update video. So have a good day, folks. Make sure you stay safe out there. And, uh, man, congratulations to that lucky winner of the uh, Mega Millions. We got one winner winning like one point something billion dollars that is crazy so some somewhere around illinois is what i heard chicago outside of chicago uh, one lucky person struck those numbers i got like two out of the five and i didn't win nothing so <laughs> i should get something for picking two out of five but either way congratulations to that person whoever it may be all right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe out there. We'll chat you a little bit later on. Peace out.